Well hello there! Have you ever wondered why some fish grow big lumps on their heads? I'm sure we've all seen a flower horn before, and they are notorious for having huge nuku humps. Today, I'm going to answer the question. And no, I'm not going to give you the generic answer like, because it's a male. That doesn't really answer the question. Instead, my answer is going to be driven by scientific evidence that explains why some fish grow nuku humps. Hey, what is going on guys? If you're new here, my name is Ashley and I love making fish videos. So consider subscribing and come join this community of fish lovers. Before I begin, I want you to take a guess. Pause this video and comment below your guess for why you think fish grow nuku humps. Done? Great. Now in case you don't know, flower horns are a hybrid fish and are selectively bred for their large nuku humps. So it's easy to explain why flower horns have big nuku humps, selective breeding. But nuku humps aren't only exclusive to flower horns. There are many naturally occurring species of cichlids that have nuku humps like the Midas cichlid in Central America and Dolphin cichlid in Africa. So why do these fish develop nuku humps? Well, first we need to understand and settle another curiosity you might have. That is, nuku humps consist of mostly fat. You will understand why I bring this up later. When it comes to explaining features of animals, scientists often look at things from an evolutionary functional standpoint. Features are explained by how they help the animal adapt and survive. For example, most fish are laterally compressed or skinny because it helps them swim efficiently, thus preserving energy and it also helps with avoiding predators. While some fish like the pufferfish are just about the opposite and can expand themselves to become big enough to avoid being eaten. So what purpose does the nuku hum have? Well, there are many hypotheses that make sense. One study pointed out five hypotheses. Sex recognition, species recognition, ooh, this one's interesting, mechanical advantage in a fight, improved hydrodynamics, and anti-predation. Now sex recognition makes perfect sense, as do most of these hypotheses. Male specimens of these cichlid species that grow nuku humps have far larger nuku humps than females. And it is also commonly thought that the nuku hum will grow even larger when looking to spawn. So this hypothesis checks out for now. Species recognition is also possible. Many species of cichlids grow nuku humps and cichlids are often easily crossbred in captivity. So the idea that cichlids base their species recognition on something as simple as a lump on a head doesn't seem too far-fetched. Mechanical advantage in a fight is probably the most interesting of all. If you ever seen how cichlids fight, this makes perfect sense. Cichlids will face off and stare down, often charging at each other and stopping just short of contact to warn their opponent. And when it escalates, they do what is known as lip locking, which is basically biting each other's lips. Trust me, there's nothing sensual about this. Size is everything in winning these fights, and more often than not, the bigger fish wins. So imagine you are a fish and staring down another fish head on. It is this front of the fish that is going to give you a sense of what you are up against. And a fish with a big nuku hum can appear much larger than it actually is. Plus, there will be mechanical advantages in the actual fight. Now I don't quite agree with hydrodynamics. Even though I'm not an engineer or physicist, I just don't see how that big lump is hydrodynamic. If you are an expert in this area, please correct me if I'm wrong. Now the last hypothesis is anti-predation. While this makes some sense, I don't find it particularly convincing. It does not explain why males have larger humps than females, or why the fish don't just grow larger altogether. So to find my answer, I turn to more research. This paper I found looked at the molecular mechanisms underlying nukoham formation in the dolphin cichlid. So the idea is pretty simple. They conducted a study to find out what triggers the genes responsible for nukoham growth at the molecular level. 
I'm going to read you the key finding I want to highlight. It says, We found enrichments of multiple biological processes for DE genes in the nucleohum that involve molecular and cellular responses to stimuli mediated by a variety of organic compounds and viral infection. So that's a handful and I'm no biologist, so I'll try my best to break things down. Here's a chart of their results. And we can see that the top two organic compounds that we see cellular and molecular responses are ketones and viruses. Now ketones are chemicals that we humans produce as well. Our liver makes ketones from fat as an alternate source of energy when we don't have enough sugar in our blood. So does this mean that fish grow nucleohumps as an adaptive response to starvation? Well, not really. This other study here found that long periods of starvation in rainbow trout did not increase acetone, a type of ketone in fish. However, acetone levels increase in socked eye salmon at spawning grounds. So this aligns with the common understanding that nucleohumps get bigger during spawning. Now this is as far as the original research paper goes, and they did not speculate the reasons behind their findings. So I will share with you my interpretation that seems to make sense. When cichlids spawn, it can sometimes be a long drawn process. Courtship takes time, and even days. After they spawn, the male often work together with the female to protect the eggs and fry. So from the start of courtship to the incubation of eggs and the growing up of fry, it can be weeks and maybe even months where the fish is almost entirely focused on the spawning process that little time is spared for finding food. Hence the evolutionary process of a nuchal hump. For the storage of fat needed to make ketones, and the ketones for the fish to have energy when they don't have food for a prolonged period when spawning. Now the question still remains, why do males have bigger nucleohumps than females? Well, I have an explanation for that, that ties in perfectly with this explanation and is based on scientific literature but that is a whole other topic that I will get to in another video. For now, I want to know what you think. No one has the final definitive answer to this question. So let me know down in the comments if you agree with my explanation or if any of the 5 hypotheses make more sense to you. Also, what do you think about the gene response to viruses? How could a nucleohump be an adaptive response to viruses? In my next video, I will be sharing more about flower horns. So if that is something that interests you, subscribe and turn on your post notifications. In the meantime, click the video on the left to find out why you should keep blood parrots. Or Click the video on the right to see hands-on arowana harvesting at Chenhu Fish Farm in Singapore. Don't forget to comment what you think about my explanation down below.